Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Insolvent of Scott Selections here for Tuesday, June 29th. We're getting to this play today. Quick recap what happened yesterday. We've been picking up a tough loss in the NBA with the Clippers and Suns under 215.5 at minus 120 on BetMGM. We ended up beating a huge line move. Line went all the way down to 211.5, but it did not matter. A couple of questionable flagrant fouls led to four free points. Game ended up landing 218. You do the math there, so that's kind of unfortunate. But did not didn't help that Zubak also got ruled down in the middle of the afternoon because that incentivized the Clippers to go smaller. And with them going smaller, they played a lot faster, which definitely was not anticipated going into the game. But either way, we'll look for a bounce back winner here on Tuesday. And for the play that everybody's sticking with basketball, it's going to be on the matchup between the Bucks and the Hawks in game four of the Eastern Conference Finals, taking place at around 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. And for the play that everybody's looking at a team total, and we like the Hawks team total under 106.5 at minus 110 on Fox Bet. Time recording of 2 a.m. Eastern time. A couple reasons why I like the team total under here for the Hawks. First of all, Looking at Atlanta in the series offensively, they've not been great. You looked at the Hawks and they scored 116 in game one, but a large reason for that was the fact that Trey Young scored 48 points. Since game one, though, Atlanta's offense has been an absolute mess. Scored 91 points in game two and scored 102 in game three. So the offense seems to have really hit a wall against this elite Milwaukee defense. And now Atlanta's offense should have even more problems because their star player, Trey Young, the man who did score 48 points in game one, now has a bone bruise in his foot and is currently being listed questionable for this matchup. Now, do I think Young is going to play? Yes. Do I think he's going to play well? No, especially for a guy who loves to have the ball in his hand and use a lot of, I don't want to, of, I'd say, intense dribble moves in order to create separation. I have a hard time believing he'll be able to do so because if you watched him in the fourth quarter of game three, he was a complete decoy. He was standing pretty much in the same spot running baseline. He did a one three-pointer uh, on a kickout, but for the most part, Atlanta had to run offense without him being the primary ball handler, and Atlanta, as a result, only scored 17 points in the fourth quarter. I just don't believe that if Young has a less than 35 points in a given game, that Atlanta's supporting cast is good enough to make up the difference. Now, you can talk about how Atlanta has been pretty good at finding a way to make it into the, West, into the Eastern Conference Finals up to this point. But you look at the supporting cast here, and you have John Collins, Gallinari, Bogdanovich, Herder. My question for all of you is who's the second-best offensive player on Atlanta? Because if Trey Young, let's just say with basically 50% health, because he really didn't look great uh, in game four, and I don't even know, in game three, and I don't even know if he should have been out there. But let's just say Young gives you, let's be generous, 25 points. Let's say he gives you 25 points on one leg, pretty admirable performance. My question for you, who else is going to step up? Now, Gallinari ended up stepping up in game three. Collins got into foul trouble. Capella got benched in the fourth quarter. Bogdanovich has been injured. He hasn't really been the same since he injured his foot in the Philly series. Herter's been pretty good, but can you run an offense through Herter? No. So the problem that I have with Atlanta is that unless Trey Young is going to be able to go for 35 or even more, I just think that Atlanta's got no shot of really scoring against this elite defensive team unless they catch fire from three, and I don't see that happening. But looking at Milwaukee and the metrics here, Milwaukee has the best defense in the league in the, po- in the postseason. Milwaukee ranks number one in defense efficiency this postseason, while Atlanta, even though it is in the Final Four, ranks 12th out of 16 teams in offense efficiency. So Atlanta's offense has really not been that great based on the metrics, and with Young being well below 100%, I think you should see a lot of struggles for Atlanta's offense. And I do think that you might see a little bit more Lou Williams. Maybe you'll see a couple of creative lineups. Maybe they'll go a little bit small. But with Lopez and Giannis protecting the middle, and you also have Portis who's protecting the middle off the bench, with Holiday also being a very physical defender on Trey Young, I just think Young is going to have to work for his points. And off one leg, I think he's going to struggle, which means I think Atlanta's offense should probably end up finishing around 101. They might not even get to 100 in the spot if Milwaukee treats this with the urgency that they did in game two or the second half of game three. So play there once again here for Tuesday. June 29th is going to be on the Hawks team total under 106.5 at minus 110 on Fox Bet. Bye, everyone.